Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be covering complete transmission media topic in computer network subject. I will explain all these types in detail. Guys, I have uploaded a complete computer network subject tutorials. I will provide that link in description you can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. At first, I will explain what is transmission media. Transmission media is the path through which data travels from a sender to a receiver. Guys, I will give an example. Guys, for example, I want to travel from Hyderabad to Bangalore. So, I need a path. Path is nothing but way. On road, by using my vehicle, I will travel from Hyderabad to Bangalore. So, here road is considered as path. Similarly, for example, I am in Hyderabad location. I am doing office work in my computer. I want to send some important office files to my friend who is in Bangalore location. As I am sending data, I act as sender. And my friend is receiving data. So, he act as receiver. So, I need path in order to connect to these two devices. And we call this path as transmission media. So, transmission media is nothing but it is a path which will connect to sender and receiver. So, they can easily transfer files. And we can connect devices by using wires or wireless. If we connect devices using wires, we call it as guided transmission media. And if we connect devices using wireless, we call it as unguided transmission media. So, transmission media is the path through which data travels from a sender to a receiver. There are two types of transmission media. One is guided transmission media and second one is unguided transmission media. Guys, if you connect a device using physical medium like cables, then we call it as guided transmission media. It is wide. And if we connect a device using wireless like using airwaves, radio waves or infrared waves, then we call it as unguided transmission media. I will explain this too in detail. At first, I will explain what is guided transmission media. Guided media uses physical cables to transmit signals. The signal travels as electromagnetic waves through the cable. Guys, I will give one simple example so that you can clearly understand what is guided transmission media. Guys, for example, I want to copy songs from my laptop to mobile. So, what I will do is I will connect to my laptop with mobile using cable wire. As I am connecting these devices using cable wire, we call it as guided transmission media because it is wide connection. Wide is nothing but guided transmission media. So, guided media uses physical cable to transmit signals. Guys, whenever I am copying data, data is travelled in the form of electromagnetic waves. Guys, we can't say electromagnetic waves. It will happen inside wire. So, in guided transmission media, data is travelled in the form of electromagnetic waves through cable. Guys, there are three types of guided transmission media. They are twisted pair cable, coaxial cable and fiber optic cable. I will explain all these three. At first, I will explain what is twisted pair cable. Name itself says twisted pair cable. So, pair is nothing but two wires. Twisting is nothing but combining two wires. So, twisted pair cable contains two copper wires twisted together. Guys, if we twist two wires, then other signals will not interfere. That is why twisting reduces interference from other signals. And we will use twisted pair cables in telephone networks and LANs. Guys, this is twisted pair cable structure. We will take two wires with twisted length. That is how much length we want for twisting. We will take two wires for that length. And we will do twisting of those two wires. This is structure. Guys, twisted pair cables are classified into two types. They are unshielded twisted pair. Shortly, we call it as UTP and second one is shielded twisted pair. Shortly, we call it as HTP. Guys, name itself says unshielded. There is no protection. There is no shield. So, in unshielded twisted pair, there will not be any extra protection. Unshielded twisted pair is commonly used in Ethernet. Ethernet is nothing but LAN. Guys, if we connect all computers in one floor by using cables, then we call it as Ethernet. In order to connect the computers in single floor, we use unshielded twisted pair. So, in Ethernet, that is, in order to connect to computers in single floor, we use unshielded twisted pair cables. And second one is shielded twisted pair. So, in shielded twisted pair, we will cover two wires using metal sheet. So, shielded twisted pair has extra shielding to reduce interference. And it is used in older networks. Guys, this is structure of unshielded twisted pair. We will twist two wires and we will cover those two wires using plastic cover. And whereas in shielded twisted pair, we will twist two wires and we will cover that wires with metal shield 
and we will cover metal shield with plastic cover. So there will be extra protection. These are advantages of twisted pair cable. And the first one is inexpensive. Guys, twisted pair cable comes with very less cost. And second one is easy to install. We can connect twisted pair cables easily to devices. These are disadvantages of twisted pair cable. And the first one is interference may occur. Guys, for example, if we talk in telephone networks, sometimes there will be signal break because of interference. So sometimes interference may occur. And second disadvantage is limited speed and distance. Guys, from twisted pair cables, data will travel very slow. And we cannot connect these cables with long distance. Guys, if we connect two devices in short distance using twisted pair cable, then speed of data will be 1 GB per second. And if we connect a devices in long distance, speed will be 4 MB per second. Guys, unshielded twisted pairs are classified into five categories. Category 1, which is used in old phone networks. Data speed is 1 MB per second, which is very, very slow. And category 2 is used in token ring networks. Token ring networks are older local area networks, which will connect a device in ring fashion. Here, data speed is 4 MB per second. And category 3 is 16 MBPS, which is used in old Ethernet. Ethernet is like LAN, which will connect a device in single floor or building. And category 4 is 20 MBPS per second. And category 5 is 100 MBPS per second. Present which we are using in local area networks, like in colleges and offices. Guys, this is unshielded twisted pair, where two wires are covered with plastic cover. And this is shielded twisted pair, where two wires are covered with copper shield. And this copper shield is covered with plastic cover. So there will not be any interference. Guys, next to guided transmission media is coaxial cable. Guys, coaxial cable has four main components. They are inner conductor, insulating layer. We also call it as dielectric system. And there is outer layer and protective cover. Guys, we also call protective cover as jacket. So these are four main components in coaxial cable. And this coaxial cable is most preferred to guide a transmission media for transmitting signals. Coaxial cable contains two conductors. They are inner conductor, which is surrounded by dielectric system, or we also call it as insulating layer. And there is outer conductor, surrounded by jacket. We also call jacket as protective cover. Outer conductor is covered with protective shield called jacket. It basically protects inner conductor from electromagnetic interference that carry the electric signals. Guys, outer conductor is covered with a protective shield called jacket. Because of the jacket, electromagnetic waves will not go out. Guys, this is structure of coaxial cable. There are four components. Guys, one is inner conductor. This is copper wire. And there is insulating layer. We also call it as dielectric system. It is like plastic material which will separate inner conductor and outer conductor and outer conductor is covered with jacket because of this jacket electromagnetic signals will not go out guys coaxial cables are classified into two types they are flexible coaxial cable and second one is rigid coaxial cable flexible coaxial cable is most commonly used and whereas rigid coaxial cable is used for specialized applications it consists of oven thread sheet usually made of copper wire guys these are advantages of coaxial cable Guys, if you use coaxial cable, other signals will not interfere. So our message will pass smoothly. So there is less interference. And when compared to twisted pair cables, coaxial cable can transmit data over long distance. These are disadvantages of coaxial cable. And the first one is more expensive than twisted pair cables. Guys, when compared to twisted pair cables, coaxial cables are costly. And it is hard to install coaxial cables. Guys, coaxial cables are used in cable TVs and internet connections. And we also use these coaxial cables in some telephone and Ethernet networks. Ethernet is nothing but local area network. Third unguided transmission media is fiber optic cable. Name itself says fiber optic. So this cable is made up of glass or plastic fiber. So it is made up of glass or plastic fiber that transmits data as a light signals. Guys, in fiber optic cable, data is transferred in the form of light signals. So it is very fast and support long distance communication. Guys, this is structure of fiber optic cable. It contains mainly three components. They are core, cladding and jacket. Core is nothing but it is a glass fiber through which data is transferred in the form of light signals. From core, data is transferred in the form of light signals. And second one is cladding. This layer will surround the core so that light signals will not go out. And third one is jacket. Jacket is nothing but outer protective cover. It is basically made up of plastic. So fiber optic cable contains three components. They are core, cladding and jacket. Core is nothing but it is a glass fiber through which data is transferred in the form of light signals. And cladding means this is layer 
that is present on top of core, it will not allow light signals to go out. Cladding will keep light signals inside. And next one is jacket, outer protective cover, basically made up of plastic. These are advantages of fiber optic cable. And the first one is very fast. Guys, when compared to fixed pair cable and coaxial cable, fiber optic cable will transfer data very fast. That is up to 10 GB per second and even more. And second one is it will transfer data over longer distance. Guys, electrical signals will not affect fiber optic cable. And these are disadvantages. And the first one is expensive. When compared to remaining cables, this fiber optic cable is expensive. And second one is difficult to install and maintain. This cable is very difficult to connect to devices and maintenance is very tough. These cables are used in internet backbones and telephone networks and they are also used for medical imaging and also for decorative lighting. Guys, fiber optic transmissions are classified into two types. They are multi-mode fiber and single mode fiber. In multi-mode fiber, there will be multiple light waves and multi-mode fiber is used for shorter distance communication. Multi-mode fibers are classified into two types. They are step index multi-mode and graded index multi-mode. In step index multi-mode, Light will bounce inside the core. Guys, I already said before, this is core. Inside this, there will be multiple light signals that will bounce inside. This is structure. There are multiple light rays through which data will travel. That is why we call it as multi-mode fiber. And second multi-mode fiber is graded index multi-mode. In graded index multi-mode, light will move smoothly for better performance. So this is sender. You can give any structure. And this is receiver. You can give any structure. And this is how light rays will pass inside the core. And in this, light waves will move smoothly for better performance. And second fiber optic transmission is single mode fiber. The name itself says single mode. So there will be only single light path through which data will travel. It is suitable for longer distance communication as there is only single path through which data will travel. So data will travel smoothly. So there is only single path where data will travel smoothly. So it is high speed and travels long distance. And it will give better performance. So this is sender. This is receiver. Data will travel smoothly for long distance in single light path. Next I will explain difference between fiber optic cable and copper wire. And the first difference is fiber optic has very high bandwidth. Guys bandwidth is nothing but amount of data that can be transferred over the cable. We call it as bandwidth. So high bandwidth means there is high amount of data that can be traveled using the cable. And copper wire has limited bandwidth. So less amount of data will be traveled using cable. Fiber optic cables are more expensive and copper wires are less expensive. And these cables are light in weight, so they will occupy less space. And copper wires are heavy weight, so they will occupy more space. Fiber optic cables has high strength and copper wires has low strength. Guys, in fiber optic cable, though if cable length is very high, there is no loss of signal. And whereas in copper wire, if cable length is very high, then there is chance for loss of signal. Fiber optic cables are updating day by day. So these are fast developing technology. And at present, copper wire don't have any developments. So it is steady state developing technology. And fiber optic cables are high safety and copper wires are low safety. These are differences between fiber optic cable and copper wire. Next I will explain unguided transmission media. We also call it as wireless transmission media. Guys, transmission media is nothing but it is the path through which data is transferred from sender to receiver. Unguided transmission media mean transferring data from sender to receiver wireless. For example, I will on Bluetooth and then I will transfer my files from my mobile to laptop. This is one of the example of wireless transmission because I am using Bluetooth. For example, by using remote, I will access my TV as TV and remote. Both are connected wireless. This is example of unguided transmission media. So wireless transmission media does not use physical wires to send signals. Instead, it transmits signals through air, vacuum and sea water. Guys, vacuum is nothing but it is a space that do not contain anything. It don't contain air and any other particles. We call that space as vacuum. So data can be transferred either using air, vacuum or sea water in wireless transmission media. Guys, there are different types of wireless signal propagation. Propagation is nothing but the way waves travel. We call it as propagation. Waves can be traveled either using vacuum or air or sea water. It first I will explain. What is ground wave propagation? Guys, whatever the signals that travel on our earth's surface, we call it as ground wave propagation. So in ground wave propagation, signals travel along the surface of the earth. The signals have low frequency. Thus, frequency is nothing but how many times wave repeat. We call it as frequency. If waves repeat more, then data transfer will be very fast. 
If wave sleep is slow, then data transfer will be very slow. And this ground wave propagation covers long distance. And second one is sky wave propagation. Signals that are transmitted to the ionosphere, which reflect them back to the earth. We call it as sky wave propagation. Sky wave propagation uses uplink frequency and downlink frequency. In uplink frequency, signals are transmitted from earth to ionosphere. Whereas in downlink frequency, signals are transmitted back from ionosphere to earth. Guys, ionosphere is nothing but it is layer which is present in sky. It contains ions. This ionosphere is far away from earth. It is in between range from 50 kilometers to 1000 kilometers. This ionosphere basically contains ions which helps in transferring signals. And third one is line of sight propagation. Guys, for example, there are two antennas and signals will travel in straight line. Guys, in line of sight propagation, signals will travel between two antennas in a straight line. This method is used for high frequency communication like satellite and mobile networks. Guys, high frequency is nothing but waves will repeat more number of times. So, data transfer will be very fast. And this line of sight propagation is used in mobile networks and satellites. Okay, these are some of the reasons why we need wireless communication. And the first one is useful in emergency like floods and earthquake. Guys, wireless signals will transmit data very fast. So, in emergency conditions like floods and earthquake, we can use wireless communication. Guys, for example, if you consider wide transmission media, we need to purchase wires in order to establish connection. So, when compared to wide connection, as wireless communication don't require any expensive infrastructure, so it is cost efficient. And third one is, can you handle a sudden increase in users without additional equipments? Guys, if there are so many users in wide transmission media, then we need to purchase more cables. But whereas in wireless, even though if users increases, then there is no need of additional equipments. Next, I will explain various types of wireless transmission media. And the first one is electromagnetic waves. Wireless communication uses electromagnetic waves for signal transmission. Guys, whatever waves that this wireless transmission media contains, we can't see that waves. Just the data will be transferred by using waves. We can't see those waves. Guys, electromagnetic waves contain radio waves. Radio waves are used in radio and television broadcasting. And they also contain microwaves, which are used in satellite and mobile communication. And they contain infrared waves. They are used in remote control. By using infrared waves, our TV remote will transfer signals to TV. And infrared rays also used in shorter range communications. And next one is visible light waves. I already explained fiber optic cables. We will use light waves in fiber optics. Next one is UV rays, X rays, and gamma rays. We will not use all these rays for communication, so there is no need to discuss. Guys, all these electromagnetic waves can be traveled either using air, vacuum, or sea water. Guys, I already explained what are radio waves. Guys, radio waves are used for radios and television signals, and they does not require antennas to work. They will work using ground wave propagation and sea wave propagation. They are used in navigation systems. And third one is terrestrial microwave transmission. Guys, they will use tall antennas for direct communication. Signals will be transmitted in one line using antennas. They were used for TV and telephone communications. Guys, these microwaves act as backbone for mobile networks. And frequency range is 1 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz. And fourth one is infra transmission. Guys, I already explained all this before. Infra transmission is used for short distance communication like wireless keyboards, TV remotes, etc. Guys, this is more secure because they cannot pass through walls. Guys, infra transmission will work based on infra ports. They are present in mobiles, printers, and smart TVs. And last one is light wave transmission. Guys, light wave transmission will use laser beams for communication. They have high bandwidth and low cost. And they will work based on weather conditions. If weather condition is like rain or fog, they won't work well. 